We have the fantastic, the wonderful, the lovely, beautiful Kate McKenzie, the love doctor. So. Hello everybody, it's Christmas. I know you're sat there and relaxed and didn't think you'd get approached tonight. But little did you know, you unconsciously booked a flirting night. That's right, my heart to your heart. You can't avoid me. That's right, not even in the toilet. No, tonight's the night everybody. We're gonna come true. We're gonna make love tonight, here in the Bavar Bar. That's right, because Chris, it's Christmas. I know some people can't stand Christmas, but we could feel like it's a good time, couldn't we? We're gonna bring on the joygasms, open up your cells, imagine it's gonna be a good time, and feel good about you, that's right. So what I'd like you to do, just to help me out a little bit, just twinkle your hand in the air just a little bit. That's it, just say that thank you very much. Just to help, we're gonna open this up like, twinkle a little louder, that's it. But what this does, it just starts to get the thank you very much. Just start to get yourselves moving and opening up because you know what flirting is about. Flirting is about being your best self. Thank you. Brilliant you. I love you already. Flirting is all about opening up and feeling good about you. Bold and polite since all this stuff that's gone on. We want to make sure it's all about consent, grounded and relaxed. Shall I just, where's Tim? Yeah, yeah, I'm here. <laughs> Thank you, that's a lovely music. Thank you guys. So my name's Kate. Yes, hello, hello. So lovely to be here. I have visited St. Leonard's before and it's so gorgeous, isn't it? It's so divine. And I was sat over there thinking, my God, brilliant, Matt. And then the people who stood up, genius, are you all on Radio 4? This is quite an amazing place. That was brilliant. And I thought, wow, and you didn't know you were getting a flirting talk. How am I going to do this when you might be thinking I'm going to sit back and listen to Radio 4? But I thought, you know what, I'm going to imagine you booked me unconsciously. You, were, you didn't know this, but you were sleeping at night thinking, I know, I'd like a flirting talk. <laughs> I'm not going to admit it to myself. I'm just going to turn up to that Bavard bar. And then secretly will seep into my bones, into my cells, and I'll start opening up to a joygasm. What's a joygasm? I hear you say. Well, that's what I'm here to share with you. A joygasm is the idea that you could imagine any really good experience right now. You know, it might be that you came, went to a movie. It might be um, a really great time with a person. It might be um, a moment where you felt really fantastic and you start to imagine that experience moving through your body and opening your cells up, opening every cell in your body till you're feeling really relaxed and really fantastic and this is going to help you flirt. So what I'm going to suggest to you tonight is flirting is a mastery of life because we have to relate to people. We have to relate to ourselves and we might as well flirt, flirt with yourself, mightn't you? So I'd like in your mind to now Say to yourself, I'm irresistible. <laughs> That's nice. What's your name? What's your name? Peter. Do you mind to say, I'll give you the microphone. I'm, ir you, I'm irresistible. I am irresistible. <laughs> very good, Peter. Can we have a twinkle in the air for Peter, please? <coughs> that was very nice. And can we have another? Do you mind if I ask you to say, you're, I'm irresistible? I'm um, I'm irresistible. <laughs> that was very good. So I'd like you to just say this a little bit, whisper it, okay? Because the thing about flirting is, as you probably know, 93% of communication is body language, tone, and pace. So the slower and deeper you are, the easier this is going to go. So basically what I'd like you to do is to now really slowly whisper in a deep, deep voice that comes right from your belly. You soften your belly, soften your tongue, soften your eyeballs. Imagine something happy in your heart and let it sparkle out so you relax, a little bit more relaxed. And I want you to say, I am irresistible. I think I might have to get you a bit louder. Uh, one, two, three. 
I am irresistible. Oh, you're good, you're good, you're good. That was marvellous. Can we do that again? That was really good. Honestly, you're all Radio 4 presenters, aren't you? Secretly, just arrived all together for this one night. Once again, I'm irresistible. I am irresistible. Fantastic, great, marvellous. Thank you so much. Now, the reason why I'm saying you need to flirt with yourself first is because if you're warmed up and you've warmed all your cells up and you've imagined some exotic experiences that felt really, really good, it's going to be a lot easier to go and serve the world with your flirting skills. Because that's really what it's about. When we flirt, we warm up, we feel a lot happier, but equally, we help everyone else. So if you say, hi, hello, how are you doing, what's going on? Um, we help the world be a much warmer place. And um, the truth is, also, anyone single tonight? Anyone single here? A few single people? Great, thank you. And couples, any couples here? Couples, lovely. Because this is obviously, thank you, great for couples, great for singles. You know, remember to flirt with your partner. Remember to flirt with everyone. And of course, when you're single, sometimes you feel like you have I am single tattooed to my forehead and I mustn't reveal this to anyone, otherwise I'll appear desperate. But of course, everyone loves to be complimented. And you can compliment people on what they're doing or what they're wearing or something that's going on because they've chosen what they're doing or what they're wearing and it helps you to engage. And of course, just so you know, it ain't the most attractive people who get asked out. It's the people sending the signals. What are the signals I hear you say? Well, it's looking, smiling, and it's connecting, saying hello. So what I'd like you to do now is just turn someone next to you and <laughs> smile at them. As soon as you smile, it sends a lovely signal. That's it. As soon as you're smiling and laughing, and if you could say hello, even if they're not near you, a little wave, a little hello. Just say a little hello. Hi there. Hi there. Just say a little hello. That's right. That's very nice. How is that doing? Is that warming the room up just a little bit? Very nice. Very nice. <laughs> I think you've taken the clock away, Tim. There was oh, a little clock here. Yeah, yeah there was. You wanted me to look at. Sorry. So what we're doing, thank you very much. Already I feel warmer. I feel your tender heart. And the reason why, it's a bit like, you know, if you would like to warm the atmosphere with your partner or you're single and you'd like to meet someone, it's a lot easier if you've warmed the room up already. If you've set the dining room table. <laughs> expecting that little seed to just become a plant without any water or nice earth. You're going to put the earth in, you're going to put the water in, and that seed's going to grow. So if you're intending to come home and really flirt with your partner and get them in the mood, you start earlier in the day. You think about them, you think loving thoughts. Or if you're single, you start flirting with everyone. <laughs> Because then that super attractive person is a lot easier because they're just another person. But we've got to get in the zone. We've got to get practice. You've got to turn the pilot light on. How do you do that? Yes, you imagine your gas heater with no light on. What does that room feel like in St. Leonard's on the sea? <laughs> a little chilly? So we want to turn the pilot light on. We want you to be on fire. And we want you to get going. And what the key is, is fun. That is really the key. Fun, release, and commitment. So I'm going to talk to you a little bit about fun, release, and commitment. So fun, obviously you are obviously a very fun crowd. I can't believe the standard of instant speakers, let alone the, the, the speaker who is prepared. Everybody's, everybody's a star here, it's amazing. So you're obviously on for fun, you're a relaxed crowd. And, um, but what I would say to other people, not quite as fun as you guys, is I would say, have a look at your diary. How much fun is in your diary? How many new different things that you haven't been thinking about is in your diary that opens you up and gets you going? And if there isn't much fun in your diary, I would say, 
see what fun you can get in the diary. Have you been rollerblading recently? <laughs> what about trampolining? Is that just my fantasy? Is it swimming with dolphins? What kind of things would be fun for you? Anyone got any fun ideas? Come on guys, you're so natural at this. Is it, are you just keeping it secret from me? So that's what I'd say. I'd say have a look in your diary and see what would be fun because this is what's going to turn you on. And when you're turned on, you radiate. That's right. You radiate with light. And people are drawn to you. They can't help it, including your partner. Even if you feel like your partner is not so drawn to you anymore, start putting some strange outfits on. Things can happen at night. <laughs> Honestly, I know it sounds weird, but we get used to thinking they know what I look like. They won't find it interesting. They will. They will. They'll wonder what happened to you. And you'll say, look, I'm becoming more fun. I'm trying out new things. <laughs> and if you're single, really go for it. Um, and start making little lists of fun things to do. I'll tell you my own story. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a love coach and I'm a psychosexual therapist. Yes, a sex therapist. Sounds very New York, doesn't it? But no, I live in Brighton and they do exist. In Brighton and London, they do. Um, yeah, I'm a sex therapist and a couples counsellor. And the reason why I'm saying this is many hairdressers, as you probably know, often don't get their hair cut. I'll take the bells off just in case it's distracting. And, um, and the same with love coaches. Sometimes love coaches, there's a, there's a small... <laughs> Sometimes love coaches are so busy helping other people find love, they forget to attend to their own garden. Yes, very sad. So, so what I did a few years ago is I thought, no, enough. I'm going to follow my own medicine. I'm going to give myself Augustoff, which is very good for a freelance self-employed person. I don't know if anyone runs their own thing here, but it's a very good thing to do if you can. And I'm going to go to festivals all month, because I love festivals, and I'm going to have fun. And you know how much fun I'm going to have? I'm going to swap my phone, one of those smartphone things, you know, with emails and Facebook, all that type of thing. I'm going to swap it for a Nokia phone. I'm going to go back to the olden days. Internet, what's that? So that I'll be present, so that I'll really be with the fun, I won't be looking on that thing the whole time. So I swapped it to an old Nokia phone, and I booked three festivals on the trot. First festival I went with friends, which was lovely, but of course I met one person, that was the reflexologist who did my feet, because I was still in my London zone, living in London at the time, and I was still a little bit shy. I know you can't believe it, but you know, these things can happen. Uh, but second festival, I went with one friend, and I was in and out of tents, dancing, flowers in my hair. Make it easy for everyone to chat to you. Put a little weird book in your book hand, and make a, put, a, put a strange t-shirt or tie on, so they've got something to talk to you about. And I was in and out, and there were these girls there, and they're going, what are you on? I thought, what am I on? I knew what I was on. Second festival. I'd warmed up. Pilot light was on. Yes. Second festival. I was buzzing here, buzzing there. People were responding to me. People were flirting with me. I was a teenager. It was amazing. Third festival. I knew what to do. You pretend you are in a pink love dome the entire time. <laughs> no one else realizes. It was amazing. So basically what you do is you just make sure you're relaxed, you open up to your, the parasympathetic nervous system, which is the relaxing nervous system, so that you're much more relaxed, like lower your voice, soften your belly, open your heart, and then when you go into these different tents, you find the right moment. You don't go up to someone and go, hello, how are you, what's going on? You find the right moment, say, if there is a moment, and there will be that quiet little moment if it exists, and you say, hi, how are you? So third festival, I helped a friend meet someone, she said, I'd like to meet someone, helped her meet someone, all went really well, fabulous. And fourth week, I came back, so this was fun. So I was getting into the zone and it was fantastic. But alongside fun, you need to do release. Now what's release? Release is about letting go of the past. It's about saying thank you for all the experiences, all the heartbreaks that have ever happened, in order that you can say, 
I learned all these different things and I can now, my heart is open. And the reason why is one of these festivals, I had a friend called Victoria and she said I would really like to meet a man. And I said, well, we're at a festival, there's absolutely tons of them here. Let's imagine that you're going to meet a man. We went to a poetry tent and there was a beautiful poet. And uh, at the end of his session, he came and talked to her. And I thought, job done. And uh, I, asked, I could see him, he was saying, would you like to go for a cup of tea? And she's, and I could see, and I thought, brilliant. You know, you the slow motion, you go, ah. And I could see her, she went, no, you're all right. Anyway, I had to ask her, what do you mean, no, you're all right? He was looking at another woman. I said, what do you mean he was looking at another woman? You haven't met him, you haven't gone for a cup of tea. It's been two seconds, there's 40,000 women here. He's looking at anyone, what's going on? She was seeing Tony, she wasn't seeing Josh. She hadn't let go of the past. She wasn't ready. All men were going to go off with other women. She hadn't released. So release is a very important part of the puzzle, which is writing a list of all the heartbreaks and saying thank you, which means, even if that person treated you appallingly, that you say thank you. You taught me what I never, ever, ever wished to feel ever again. Or if it was a marvelous thing, thank you so much. That was amazing. And the third piece of the puzzle, so if you're doing enough fun, you've released the past and turned it into gold. The third piece of the puzzle is commitment, which is to most people would love that everything turns up. The perfect partner, even your own partner, suddenly turns up in, in, in the most erotic way and says, take me, I'm yours, um, with no problem, probably with a signed contract written in blood that says everything's going to work out perfectly with you having to do nothing at all ever. You can sit back, listen to Radio 4 and everything you've ever dreamed of is going to turn up. I don't think anyone else feels like that but I've come across some people who wouldn't mind it all showing up without them doing anything. And the truth is, the commitment is you have to show up, be vulnerable, be open, say hello, smile to all kinds of weird and wonderful strangers. Uh, with no guarantee of any outcome because that is the process of tilling the soil, watering the leaves, turning your pilot light on and becoming the very person that's going to allow you to have the life you want to have. And so my story was the fourth week in, I um, went to um, uh, the Troubadour in Earl's Court for a cup of tea with my friend to tell her all about my festivals. and. Um, what happened was, I was there with my flowers in my hair and a whole load of dresses because I was going to carry on adventuring, not go back to emails that day. And um, my friend, we was telling her lots of things. I had a book on near-death experiences. <laughs> Always helpful to have something strange and interesting. So if somebody would like to chat to you, if you're open to chatting to people in different places, you've made it easier for them. So if you've made an easy way for them to chat to you, body language, books, hats, strange colours, whatever it is, you made it easy. And someone did end up chatting to me about the book with the near-death experiences and pummeled me with loads of questions because they thought I must be intellectual with having a book like that on the table. And um, then I invited that person to come with me on my adventure of dancing all day long, which they did. And, um, and then we got married few years ago. So, uh, <laughs> yes, so it was marvellous. So, but what I would say was, was that even though clearly this is my job and hopefully I'm getting better and better at being more open and being more friendly, it's a journey. I started off shy and uh, as you probably know, people teach the very thing that they need to learn and become better and better. It's their own work creates the person that they become. So what I would say was is that through doing that journey of opening up to fun, it allowed me to be a lot more warmer and create a warm atmosphere which allowed me to be much more open to connect with someone. So what I would say was, and if you find that in your relationships, the key would be to open to having a lot more fun right now and bring that energy back to your partner. So what, it, what are we talking about? We're talking about being really sweet, really lovely, really loving 
And what that does, it warms everything up. It warms you up, it warms the people up, it warms the environment up, it warms your partner up. And of course, if you wanted to turn to someone right now, and just look at them a little bit in the eyes. Just warmly, if it feels okay. Don't, if you don't want to, obviously. This is safety, consent, just say no. But if you feel like you can just look warmly, just a little bit of warmth, soft eyes, warm face, a little warmth to someone. Give them a little warmth. And just notice what it's like to give a little warmth and a little hello to someone near you. That's lovely. You can feel the temperature go, go up a little bit, can't you? So, I'm just going to check in with you guys. How are you feeling? How are you feeling? Are you feeling a little warmer? Yes. A little warmer? Great. So this is the thing. Of course, you can have lovely flirting chat-up lines. And it's always good to say, is there anyone who would mind me flirting with you? Or you might say, you are so amazing, I felt drawn to speaking to you. Or just hello. Hello is a really, really beautiful basic one. But you can add many dimensions, like, can you tell me how to cook those vegetables <laughs> in a supermarket? Or talk about a painting. So there's many ways to come in. But the main thing is, if you are having enough fun, you'll forget about meeting the one. And you'll allow yourself to be much more radiant, much more open, and much more connected. It'll be a lot easier to say those hellos. And if you're flirting with yourself and feeling irresistible, no one, absolutely no one, would want to avoid you, ever. So, thank you. Well, how, how, how brilliant, how brilliant that. Now, next time when you come to the Vababa and you see me uh, with a hat on and a, and a, a stack of intellectual books, <laughs> I am flirting with you all, okay? So, uh, does anybody have any questions for Kate? Now is the time to share your sexual experience. If you don't know, no, there's no pressure to do that. Um, yeah, I'll give you the mic. Yes. I'll... Can we share your question out? Yeah, sure. Um, do you think human beings are really designed to be monogamous, or do you think society is setting us up to fail? Very good question. <laughs> what do you want? Well, I'm married, so I'm not actually the right person to ask. Well, I I, I think you are the right person to ask. Because I think, this is, this is my theory on play and fun, I think actually we need a whole community for a couple. And I don't, I don't mean to see, say you need to share genitals, I mean to have input and fun and joy. You might want to be monogamous, that's your choice, everyone diff, diff, makes different choices. I just think that actually sometimes there's a huge pressure on couples that they've got to be everything to each other. And I think, personally, um, because obviously I work with couples, and this pressure on the couple that the person's got to provide everything can, can, can be a lot. And actually, if I ask couples, really, what, what resources have you got? What fun are you having? And when they start to make sure they're both having fun as well as with each other as well as in their lives, it can, it can make a big change. Obviously, there can be other, other dynamics, but when you said, is everyone monogamous? No. You, you, is that your question? Well, no, I was just asking if human beings are designed to be, or if... There's if, lots. Because society tells us that we should be, but yes. we should get married, we should do this, we should, so we're told that we should be, so sure. I don't know if we're just being set up. Uh, I think, you know, the thing is, that's a big question, <coughs> and lots of people would say they're not designed to be monogamous, and lots of people would say you are, and it's probably hugely down to different people's choices. What I'm interested in is how are you in your choice? If you're feeling okay in your choice and it feels good for you, or are you feeling restricted in your choice? And then maybe looking deeper in what do you need? Because I think it's, you'd have to be very, very, very uh, conscious to do it very well, to do a to do many different people in your relationship, to do that very well, you have to do it con very consciously, but some people do. So, it, it, everybody's different, and it's probably looking at what are your needs in your relationship, and what's other people's. I know your question was more deep, is everybody monogamous? Some people are, 
some people that suits them, but some people are not. And I suppose it's each people finding out what's right for them. But I think it's an art form, yeah. managing a relationship and managing some other ones at the same time. I think it's yeah. quite a big art form. So. Any, 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 more, any more questions? Oh, yes, question here. Um, what happens, let's say, if you're a more or less straight guy, you move to a new town and you discover it's a lesbian hotspot? <laughs> <laughs> what's, what's the question? What, what, is the, what is the question? Is the question that, so that if you're a straight guy and you've moved to a new town and you find it's a lesbian hotspot? That's the question. What, is that exciting? No, so what would you like? What, is, are you saying where are the straight women? Is that the question? Some of my best friends are lesbians, but that's So are you saying every woman you meet is a lesbian? Did someone say? Maybe that's what they tell him. Oh, that's what they. Yes, yeah, yes. Yeah. So you know, what's your name? Doctor Boogie. Doctor Boogie. Now, Doctor, this is really fabulous because what's really interesting is I work with lots of women who say there are no men. Yes, I do. Yes, I get. They say, they say where are all the men? So I'm going to have to say. There's, there's, there's Dr. Boogie in St. Leonard's. She's looking at... You know what's funny? I lived somewhere called Hebden Bridge for a while. And um, if you... On a Friday night, this was a, quite a while ago, but on a Friday night, a lot of the single women were... Straight single women were hanging out in Nelson's wine bar, hoping that, you know, men were going to come by. So um, what I'm saying is... Why don't you go where the straight women are? You <laughs> <laughs> would? It's not in Hebden. <laughs> but you, you're avoiding my question, Dr. Boogie. Right. Of course he is! <laughs> I think you need to plant some seeds. <laughs> is, he, is he too old? Is he too old for love? Come on, Dr. Boogie. Now, does St. Leonard's have straight women? Anyone? It said, does St. Leonard's have straight women? <laughs> Can anyone tell me? Are there straight single women in St. Leonard's? Can we have a yes, please, if there is? Yes. We've got the whole audience saying there's straight single women here. Yes. So I think maybe you got... What are you going to say? No. Okay. We'll, we'll take another question. <laughs> I, I think... It's all about timing. The, um, so, one last question. There's a, there's a wave over there. Yes. Right. Use it on me. Can I sit on your lap? <laughs> Thank you so much. You'll have to. That's brilliant. That's brilliant. Yes, I, I'm sure I've got better than that. But um, the thing about it, which just goes back to the lovely lady. What was your name? Faith, I, obviously, depending where you're at in life, you've got to make decisions about how you want to be in your relationship, what the rules are. But I'm allowed to flirt as much as I like. And uh, because I, we understand what the, uh, we've agreed on what the rules are in my relationship. And I think flirting is marvellous. Absolutely marvellous. It, it, and so, Dr. Boogie, I'm hoping to hear that you are flirting quite soon. <laughs> And you're not just going to lesbian bars to do it. So, <laughs> so thank you very much. Thank you, Kate. That's that's fantastic.